when I took a position that it was time for Egypt to transition, uh, it was based on the fact that uh, Egypt had not had democratic government uh, for decades, if ever. And that's what the people were calling for. They went through an election process that, by all accounts, were legitimate. And Mr. Morsi was elected. And the U.S. government's attitude has been we would deal with a democratically elected government. What we've also said is, is that democracy is not just about elections. It's also about how are you working with an opposition? How do you treat uh, dissenting voices? How do you treat uh, minority groups? Uh, and you know, what is clear right now is that uh, although Mr. Morsi was elected democratically, there's more work to be done to create the conditions in which everybody feels that their voices are heard and that the government is responsive and truly representative. And so what we've encouraged the government to do is to reach out to the opposition and work through these issues in a political process. It's not the U.S.'s job to determine what that process is. But what we have said is go through processes that are legitimate and observe rule of law. Uh, now, obviously, we've been watching uh, these big protests. Our number one priority has been making sure that our embassies and consulates are protected. Number two, what we've cons consistently insisted on is that all parties involved, whether it's members of Mr. Morsi's party or the opposition, that they remain peaceful. Uh, and although we have not seen uh, the kind of violence that many had feared so far, uh, the potential remains there, and everybody has to show restraint. I should add, by the way, we have seen many reports of women being assaulted uh, in these protests, and uh, for those who uh, are participating uh, in these protests or marches, uh, assaulting women does not qualify as peaceful protests. Um, so we're going to continue to work with all parties inside of Egypt to try to channel this through legal, legitimate uh, processes. 